Gadolinium is a chemical element with the symbol GD and atomic number 64. Gadolinium is a silvery white metal when oxidation is removed. It is only slightly malleable and is a ductile rare earth element. Gadolinium reacts with atmospheric oxygen or moisture slowly to form a black coating. Gadolinium is named after the mineral gadolinite, in turn named after Finnish chemist and geologist Johann Gadolin. In 1880, the Swiss chemist Jean-Charles Galassard de Marignac observed the spectroscopic lines from gadolinium in samples of gadolinite and in the separate mineral cerite. The latter mineral proved to contain far more of the element with the new spectral line. De Marignac eventually separated a mineral oxide from cerite, which he realized was the oxide of this new element. He named the oxide, gadolinia. Because he realized that, gadolinia, was the oxide of a new element, he is credited with the discovery of gadolinium. The French chemist Paul Emile Lecoq de Boisbaudrin carried out the separation of gadolinium metal from gadolinia in 1886. Gadolinium has no large-scale applications, but it has a variety of specialized uses. Because gadolinium has a high neutron cross-section, it is effective for use with neutron radiography and in shielding of nuclear reactors. It is used as a secondary, emergency shutdown measure in some nuclear reactors, particularly of the CANDU reactor type. Gadolinium is used in nuclear marine propulsion systems as a burnable poison. Gadolinium-157 is used to target tumors in neutron therapy. Gadolinium possesses unusual metallurgic properties. With as little as 1% of gadolinium improving the workability and resistance of iron, chromium, and related alloys to high temperatures and oxidation. Gadolinium is paramagnetic at room temperature, with a ferromagnetic Curie point of 20 degrees Celsius. Paramagnetic ions, such as gadolinium, increase nuclear spin relaxation rates, making gadolinium useful as a contrast agent for MRI. Solutions of organic gadolinium complexes and gadolinium compounds are used as intravenous contrast agents to enhance images in medical and MRA procedures. Magnavist is the most widespread example. Nanotubes packed with gadolinium, called gadonanotubes, are 40 times more effective than the usual gadolinium contrast agent. Traditional gadolinium-based contrast agents are untargeted, generally distributing throughout the body after injection, but will not cross the intact blood-brain barrier. Brain tumors, and other disorders that degrade the blood-brain barrier, allow these agents to penetrate into the brain and facilitate their detection by contrast-enhanced MRI. Gadolinium is used as a phosphor in medical imaging. It is contained in the phosphor layer of X-ray detectors, suspended in a polymer matrix. Terbium-doped gadolinium oxysulfide, GD2O2S, TB, at the phosphor layer converts the X-rays released from the source into light. This material emits green light at 540 nanometers because of the presence of TB3+, which is very useful for enhancing the imaging quality. The energy conversion of GD is up to 20%, which means that one-fifth of the X-ray energy striking the phosphor layer can be converted into visible photons. Gadolinium oxyorthosilicate is a single crystal that is used as a scintillator in medical imaging such as positron emission tomography, and for detecting neutrons. Gadolinium compounds are also used for making green phosphors for color TV tubes. Gadolinium-153 is produced in a nuclear reactor from elemental europium or enriched gadolinium targets. It has a half-life of 240 plus or minus 10 days and emits gamma radiation with strong peaks at 41 keV and 102 keV. It is used in many quality assurance applications, such as line sources and calibration phantoms, to ensure that nuclear medicine imaging systems operate correctly and produce useful images of radioisotope distribution inside the patient. It is also used as a gamma-ray source in X-ray absorption measurements and in bone density gauges for osteoporosis screening. Gadolinium is used for making gadolinium yttrium garnet, which has microwave applications and is used in fabrication of various optical components and is substrate material for magneto-optical films. Gadolinium can also serve as an electrolyte in solid oxide fuel cells, SOFCs. Using gadolinium as a dopant for materials like cerium oxide gives an electrolyte having both high ionic conductivity and low operating temperatures. Research is being conducted on magnetic refrigeration near room temperature, which could provide significant efficiency and environmental advantages over conventional refrigeration methods. Gadolinium-based materials, such as GD54, are currently the most promising materials, owing to their high Curie temperature and giant magnetic caloric effect. Pure GD itself exhibits a large magnetic caloric effect near its Curie temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And this has sparked interest into producing GD alloys having a larger effect in tunable Curie temperature. In GD54, C and J compositions can be varied to adjust the Curie temperature. 
Gadolinium barium copper oxide, GDBCO, is a superconductor with applications in superconducting motors or generators such as in wind turbines. It can be manufactured in the same way as the most widely researched cuprate high temperature superconductor. Yttrium barium copper oxide and uses an analogous chemical composition. It was used in 2014 to set a new world record for the highest trapped magnetic field in a bulk high temperature superconductor. Gadolinium is used for anti neutrino detection in the Japanese Super Kamiokande detector in order to sense supernova explosions. Gadolinium gallium garnet was used for imitation diamonds and for computer bubble memory. As a free ion, gadolinium is reported often to be highly toxic, but MRI contrast agents are chelated compounds and are considered safe enough to be used in most persons. The toxicity of free gadolinium ions in animals is due to interference with a number of calcium ion channel-dependent processes. It is believed therefore that clinical toxicity of gadolinium-based contrast agents in humans will depend on the strength of the chelating agent, however this research is still not complete. About a dozen different GD chelated agents have been approved as MRI contrast agents around the world. In patients with kidney failure, there is a risk of a rare but serious illness called nephrogenic systemic fibrosis that is caused by the use of gadolinium-based contrast agents. The disease resembles sclerimyxedema and to some extent scleroderma. It may occur months after a contrast agent has been injected. Its association with gadolinium and not the carrier molecule is confirmed by its occurrence with various contrast materials in which gadolinium is carried by very different carrier molecules. Due to this, it is not recommended to use these agents for any individual with end-stage kidney failure as they will require emergent dialysis. The Canadian Association of Radiologists are that dialysis patients should only receive gadolinium agents where essential and that they should receive dialysis after the exam. If a contrast-enhanced MRI must be performed on a dialysis patient, it is recommended that certain high-risk contrast agents be avoided but not that a lower dose be considered. The American College of Radiology recommends that contrast-enhanced MRI examinations be performed as closely before dialysis as possible as a precautionary measure. The FDA recommends that potential for gadolinium retention be considered when choosing the type of GBCA used in patients requiring multiple lifetime doses, pregnant women, children, and patients with inflammatory conditions. Anaphylactoid reactions are rare, occurring in approximately 0.03 to 0.1%. Long-term environmental impacts of gadolinium contamination due to human usage is a topic of ongoing research. Gadolinium has recently been used to measure the distance between two points in a protein via electron paramagnetic resonance. Something that gadolinium is especially amenable to thanks to EPR sensitivity at W-band, 95 GHz, frequencies.